στο Twitter και κάνε like στη σελίδα μας στο Facebook London Greek Radio On FM, on Digital Radio On your mobile and online This is London Greek Radio Hello and welcome to All About Autism, our monthly sh charity show here on London Greek Radio, aimed at helping all of us understand autism better so that we can together create a better society for autistics and the whole autism community. My name is Dr. Chris Papadopoulos and I'll be your host for the next hour. I'm a father of three children, two of whom are, who are autistic. I'm also the founder and lead of the London Autism Group charity and I'm a lecturer in public health at the University of Bedfordshire. Today I'm, as always, joined by my two lovely co-hosts and charity volunteers, Dr. Sofia Christofi, who is herself autistic, and Eli Golazzi, a parent of an autistic child. How are you both doing today? Good, yeah, good. Okay. Yeah? yeah, got over my traffic stress. <laughs> Yeah, say that again, Sophia? Got over my traffic stress. Yeah, oh yeah, had a bit of traffic coming in. Yeah. And as you can see today, we are doing live streaming for the first time on Facebook. So uh, please do feel free to uh, get involved in that Facebook stream so we can keep an eye on your questions and comments. Uh, if you'd like to get onto the Facebook uh, stream, uh, all, just, all you need to do is go to facebook.com and search for the London Autism Group Charity. Go to our um, page and uh, click on the live stream and you'll have access and you'll be able to see us at the same time. Mm -hmm. So there you go. Um, well, and uh, by the way, how are you, Ellie? Are you okay? Yeah, I'm all right, thanks. Yeah, not too bad. Yeah, you? I'm all right, thanks. Yeah, yeah, happy to be here. So I'm also delighted to say that we're joined in the studio by our lovely, amazing special guest, Dr. Vina Theodora Kubullo, who is an insurance leader at GAIN, which stands for Group of Autism, Insurance, Investment and Neurodiversity. GAIN is a community interest company who are committed to seeing the opportunities realised both for neurodivergent people and the insurance, investment and related financial service, services industry. Welcome to the show, Vina. Hello, everybody. Thank you so much for having me. Oh, it's great to have you uh, with us. Uh, and uh, yeah, we're going to get into this topic of uh, workplace inclusivity, which is your expertise, or one of your many exp areas of expertise. Not many. So one yes, <laughs> one or two. <laughs> so as listeners may know, on each monthly episode we do focus on a different topic connected to autism. And as I said, today we're going to be talking to Vina about autistics in business and getting Vina's expert advice and insight into how business leaders and managers can help create an accessible and effective workplace for their autistic colleagues and, and employees. We'll also hear from Vina about what autistic employees need to uh, need to consider. If you'd like to ask us anything during this um, show or share anything, please do. Uh, you can do this quite easily now by going to facebook.com forward slash London Autism Group Charity. That's facebook.com forward slash London Autism Group Charity and joining the live stream of this episode, which you can do on a phone, tablet, PC, any device. Very easy. Um, and then you can just go on the live stream and add your comment or question and we'll keep an eye on it. We've got Sophia diligently checking yeah. the questions at the moment. Uh, so, um, so yes, and to, just to say that we're going to be doing this every month from now on. So every episode we plan to live stream. So this will be the new way to interact with us on the show every month. Uh, so, um, we'd also finally like to, before we get into the discussion, like to point our listeners to the London Autism Group Charities YouTube channel, which now has all of the past All About Autism episodes uploaded there in case you ever miss one of our shows and you'd like to catch up. To find that, just go to YouTube and search for London Autism Group Charity. Probably best to subscribe so you don't miss future episodes that we upload there. Okay, with that all said, uh, Vina. Hi. <laughs> Please tell us a little bit more about your background and how you got into the world of autism, neurodiversity and business. And most importantly, did I pronounce your surname correctly? <laughs> <laughs> you absolutely did. And can I just say, I'm so impressed. You're such yeah, an amazing narrator. <laughs> I mean, honestly, my very, very bad voice. I grew up thinking I have the worst voice on the planet. Nowadays when I sing, I'm like, I don't care really, you know, just, <laughs> I love it. Yeah. Yeah. But um, 
Yeah, yeah, you have a lovely is, voice. Which, lovely which voice. is why I'm actually trying to be as distant from this microphone as I can. I can see some, you know, looks around this table, kind of go like, Fina, no, you have to actually come closer. <laughs> I also feel like a little bit of a guinea pig uh, because obviously it's the first uh, yes. uh, special sort of episode. So congratulations and very good choice for the guest. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, great. I am uh, I am Vina. I am Greek. I I was born in uh, Pires. I grew Ooh. up in Kalamata. Ooh, a mist- technical mistake one, number one. Okay, apologies. Go it's, ahead. It's me talking about <laughs> Kalamata, is it? I always also well, which gives me the room to actually say Kalamata is the place, obviously in the south of Greece, Peloponnese Peninsula, famous of the black olives. Oh, so yeah. there we oh, go. Exactly. Right? There, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Please, all well, can we agree? It's better than Halkidiki's one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah 100%. Oh, thank you. Thank oh, yeah, you. Yeah, 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 why didn't you bring some uh, today? What's going on? I just want to make sure that you actually prefer the Kalamata oh, olives. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. Next okay. time, then. Which is not the topic of today. Day, but obviously, you know, we um, do that I am ADHD myself, so I do represent the neurodivergent <laughs> community, and I do have the tendency to either go into autistic flow or mm. to go off tangents. So, so you're either very way, well, back into the story. I, I came, I came to the UK in London, particularly in 1998, as an 18 year old. And I started working and studying full time. Uh, that's actually seen me through a 25 year worth of career in higher education, as well as in uh, the financial services industry, uh, most notably consulting, banking and corporate industrial insurance. My life has always been surrounded by the principles of anthropocentric, so human centric um, and talent centric sort of initiatives. I've always been an avid advocate and passionate supporter of such initiatives in our sector, particularly as a sector that contributes a massive deal to the national uh, well, to the gross do- domestic product. When you say um, sector, you mean the financial, the financial sort of insurance sector. Yeah, uh, sector. but of course, I sort of refer even higher education, especially as an economist, you know, by trade, as part of the financial sort of sector. Because essentially, again, anybody who studies uh, to become an economist and probably are looking to join the aforementioned sector. Um, so you are an economist. I am an yeah. economist. My yeah. PhD was in behavioral economics. Mm. Although back in my native Greece, I sat exams for medical school. Oh, Again, wow. it's one of these societal sort of expectations. You're of a certain sort of uh, mm. mark, um, sort of student, and you have to become a doctor. Guess what? I <laughs> did not want to become one. As a matter of fact, I wanted to get into sports. I used to train, mm. well, almost professionally. I, w- I, I, I would uh, compete on national level in taekwondo, martial arts. Wow. And I have a oh, backbone in swimming. Oh, yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. oh, yeah, I, I tend to punch. <laughs> oh, great. <laughs> I, I tend to punch. I'm glad You're I'm fine. sitting this, far, this distance <laughs> away. The sudden dawns, you know, <laughs> the things that you sort of approach me with, but I, I think you'll be fine. You'll be fine. <laughs> um, <laughs> Good thing we agreed about the olives. Yeah, 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 yeah. I was thinking that. That, that was a testing moment. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. Passage. But the way you were looking at me, I was like, yes, yes, I love them, I love them. <laughs> Um, yeah, the eye says it all, right? So, uh, again, uh, and thank you, uh, we, as, as uh, neurodivergent people, we do not like using acronyms. So I always have a thing about breaking down acronyms. It's indeed the group for autism, insurance, investment and neurodiversity. A bunch of us, in a way, veterans. I mean, with 25 years, I'm hardly a veteran compared to Laurie, for instance, one of my colleagues who's been in the industry for 60 years. So mm-hmm. it gives you a matter of perspective. But, uh, we've come together in order to radicalize the employment opportunities in the industry for neurodivergent people, knowingly of the skill sets and the attitudes that neurodivergent people and yes, of course, autistic people have. And what a mm. wonderful combination that could be for the ever going sort of existing requests of talent in this changing landscape. We're speaking AI, mm. LNI, yeah. was uh, speaking AI quite a lot earlier to utilize this massively either marginalized or underutilized talent. So I think perhaps I should close, albeit temporarily at this stage <laughs> and wait for the I've question. Got, I've got one for you, uh, Vina. So um, that's really interesting. Thank you for that. Very colorful life. Wow. Amazing. Um, so my question is, what information is there about the number of Greeks in business? That's the first thing. And also including Greek women in business very important um and what do we do what do we know about greek autistics in business are there any stats there's like stats uh, (laughs) look uh, as a person who basically did a massive uh, phd thesis uh, primarily on statistical models Mm -hmm. i have to say and utilizing the wealth and assets sort of survey of the uk that had again another guinea guinea pig moment for me it was the first sort of stream that i had 
had to utilize uh, for the purpose of my PhD. I do appreciate and entirely wholeheartedly support the usage of data and indeed mm. statistics in order, as we always say, to convince people, especially leaders, C-level individuals, to take note of certain sort of um, mm. items. However, what I'd like to do without sort of refusing or indeed sort of not wishing to interact with the data point, I'd like to sort of go a little bit of a step back and really sort of emphasize how important it is that we speak of heritage and culture at this stage. Mm -hmm. So for me personally, heritage, the Greek Cypriot, the Greek heritage is so important. And we, I think within our culture, it is so pronounced that we use it as an anchor. So anytime we feel alone, especially as people who, I mean, for me, I didn't grow up in the UK. I came here as an 18 year old. It has always been an anchor, uh, a point of reference, something that really held me back onto my true values and the beliefs and, and really the things I wanted to always bring home and represent. At the same time, having said the representation sort of bit, it can be a little bit of a of a, a Sisyphus kind of task. Essentially, what I mean with that is we, we carry our heritage, it feels like sometimes, very much on our shoulders, mm -hmm. as if we're representing the entirety of Cyprus mm -hmm. and Greece, and we always make, we want to make sure that we are leading by example. And this is where neurodivergence, obviously, and intersectionality comes into the fore. I see intersectionality and this is where, you know, immigration and heritage plays such an important role mm -hmm. as this very colourful tapestry. Yeah. And then and, and cognition, obviously the way we are wired, is the conduit of it all, it's, mm -hmm. it's cutting through. So again, for me, as, as, a, as a neurodivergent Greek person who has had and is having a career, uh, family uh, and, and, and really a, a social, a very social life is so important to emphasise upon. Mm -hmm. um, back to the data sort of issue. I don't want to beat around the bush and I will be uh, very open. Uh, Greek list, um, an amazing sort of source we have, indicates 90,000 Greeks. What was that? Greek list? Greek list, yeah. That's a website, is it? Greek yes, there is, there is indeed, yeah. Mm. Um, quotes over 90,000 Greeks in the UK, okay. There's no information about autism, there's no mm. information about neurodivergence. Mm. But you said 90,000 90, Greek 000. people, yes. Greek or Greek Cypriot? Or this, is, this is the thing, mm. okay. we don't have right. the granularity mm. and we mm. should really. I, I, who are working within business or are business leaders? Or what business are people, so again, you know, there has to be a stricter, speaking mm. between mm. academics here, mm. uh, it's, it's important to acknowledge the importance of uh, mm. language and obviously strictly defining mm. the statistics. It's not really so much about the 90,000 sort of uh, uh, Greeks in the UK. It's more about the lack of data within mm, neurodivergence. Yeah. This is what I'm yeah. trying actually to sort of yeah. emphasize mm -hmm. here. And I am proudly participating and I've done so since this 18 year old uh, self of mine uh, mm -hmm. having um, come to the UK. I looked for places where I can con connect with people mm -hmm. from obviously the same country. That's mm -hmm. also very important. Yeah. Mm -hmm matters at times because I wasn't a, a smoker or a Marlboro yeah. smoker. I was trying to avoid many groups. I'm speaking about the notice, right? Yeah, you, yeah, you know yeah, what I'm oh, talking yeah, about. Yeah. I was like, no, no, no. <laughs> um, so it's the Hellenic sort of center I was going to and I still go mm. nowadays. And for me, perhaps, and I, I don't want to sort of digress here too much, but it's probably a, a, a good time and perhaps a, a good call um, for action um, that we sort of bring ourselves together and we connect a bigger community with the help and support of places indeed amazing institutions of our community and diaspora um, such as uh, the Hellenic um, Center as well as the membership organizations to try and connect on cognition and diversity of cognition mm -hmm. and really bring like-minded individuals, people who like to think in a non-linear way, who pursue businesses mm -hmm. and they demonstrate this audacity and this ambition mm -hmm. that sometimes perhaps can label somebody weird. I'm perfectly happy, mm -hmm. by the way, with that. And I'm yeah. also perfectly happy with labels simply because I believe that labels make, you know, make the promotion of certain notions mm. a little bit more accessible. Again, I'm, I, I, I'm accepting somebody who says, no, I don't want to be called X, Y, and Z. That's perfectly fine and I will try to respect it. Um, and language, obviously, and appreciating people is so important mm -hmm. in our community as well. But I think what we need to do is connect a little bit deeper and try to acknowledge each other's sort of yeah. contribution to diversity mm. and cognition in order to thrive as, as a community and also celebrate the fact that we have heritage, we have intersectionality and we have some non-linear thinkers out there who do quite a lot for us. Yes. 
Yeah, I, I agree absolutely. I think it's really important to um, promote, um, uh, and as you say, I like the way you put it, a call to action mm. for um, uh, you know the issue of um, promoting the idea of autistics, um, you know, uh, being in business and, and thriving just as much as a non-autistic person could. I think there's a there's a sort of um, uh, misconception perhaps that autistics might not be creative enough or you know, um, capable to be entrepreneurial, you know, and, and business leaders. But of course, it's that's just a load of, you know, nonsense. And um, the likelihood is that there are probably lots and lots of autistic Greeks yeah. in business that are going yeah. uh, under the radar because they're too scared to perhaps come out because of the stigma to disclose, mm -hmm. or maybe they don't know it themselves. But as you say, a call to action to sort of put more light on this would be good because for the next generation mm -hmm. of young autistic people, uh, in, especially I suppose Greek autistic mm -hmm. women in particular, I guess, who you know um, can be feeling more confident and more empowered to get into business, knowing that they're going to be supported for who they are. Is that is that what you're thinking? Yeah, absolutely. And perhaps two small points on that. You, you did emphasize women. There's a reason, and also for the audience, it's very important for us to clarify that we know the statistics and there's uh, research that basically suggests that women often either mask or mm -hmm. because of the articulation of neurodivergence, or indeed autism, being different, it has not been as successful to capture mm -hmm. in the diagnosis sort of stages. So it's so important and also of course important for women uh, or say non-male, um, again, having this stereotypical sort of approach of the encouragement that almost comes with this societal sort of forces to feel empowered to pursue dreams. The point also, the second point I want to make was a slight distinction between anybody who's getting to be under the umbrella of a business person as well as, or versus, I don't like sort of versus because it's almost polarizing people, putting them in two different sort of boxes. Um, say as a different concept to people who start their own businesses. Mm -hmm. So the self-starters, the entrepreneurs, uh, the, 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 the startups, yeah. exactly, they are hugely represented. And I'm not speaking of uh, Greek statistics, of which we said we have none, um, but I'm speaking of global statistics here. People who tend to find it difficult to be immersed and accepted mm -hmm. and represented in the workplace tend to say, okay, if that system does not accept me, I better mm -hmm. look after myself. There's a need in it. Um, I suppose need for us to find a way to fulfill our true potential. And this is what people do. They say, I'm going to have my own startup. I'm going to start my own business. I'm going to take the risk. Also, I often say, and my, my friends, the people who know me know that very well, I tend to be unfiltered. I tend to be more raw. I tend to, you know, talk the truth uh, at any sort of, you know, point in time and against all odds or any other sort of sacrifices that might come as a, as a trade-off. Um, and we tend to disregard risks. So risk, mm. we acknowledge, but we want to sort of break through this barrier because that's almost a way to liberate ourselves, to, to see for ourselves how capable we are. Mm. Sophia, I, I, I feel like you almost want to, there's something yeah. you want to say or contribute. No, I was or just ask. thinking yeah. presumably a lot of the um, entrepreneurs or people that are in startup business or set, set up their own businesses are likely to be the ones that are neurodivergent mm. because they can't find their place Correct. in a workplace. Great point. Um, and I was just thinking previously as well, where we talked about employment statistics, there's a bit of a problem with how those statistics are put across because it seems that there's not many autistic people in employment, mm. but we know that lots of people yeah. don't disclose for various reasons. There are people that are undiagnosed. Um, so it's really hard to get an accurate picture of how many autistic people and neurodivergent people are in employment yeah. um, for, for various reasons. Yeah, I was looking at the um, Office for National Statistics data on just general employment recently, and I think it says among disabled groups, uh, I mean, up to the year of 2021, there was nothing more recent than that, unfortunately, in the UK. But among disabled groups, autistics in, um, in employment, the statistics was 29%. Mm -hmm. Now, I haven't got a problem with, with them reporting 29%, so long as that context that you just provided is, provide, mm -hmm. is given. Yeah. Because otherwise, mm. there's a potential mis 
interpretation from people on the outside yeah. to think, wow, autistics can't, can't work, in, work, work effectively. Like yeah. in, you know, but actually, it's not the case. It's because of employment discrimination. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm sure this happens in business workplaces as well, and also lack of disclosure. I mean, if it is the reality that only 29% are reporting, then, then yeah. you know that's a different story than 25, 29% in reality. Yeah. And I think that sort of statistic could also make neurodivergent people reluctant to disclose as well, because if they're looking at the statistics yeah. themselves thinking, mm. well, why is it that only 7% of people have said that they're in employment? Maybe I should keep this information to myself. myself. Yeah. yeah. So it kind of works both ways. Yeah. It makes it makes the non-autistic or non-neurodivergent people think that there's not many of us in employment, mm. but it also could make us think that there's a reason we shouldn't be disclosing. Mm. Yeah, yeah, um, really interesting. Okay, yeah. well, uh, maybe we'll pick this up after the break, mm. uh, but uh, it'd be good to go on a short break for the time being. Um, a reminder that you can watch us now on our live stream, uh, and also you can send in comments and questions at the live stream by just going to facebook.com forward slash London Autism Group Charity. Um, that's facebook.com forward slash London Autism Group Charity. Just click the live stream button. You'll be able to see us and uh, communicate with us through the live stream. Okay, so we'll go to a short um, advert break and uh, we'll be right back. On FM, on digital radio, on your mobile and online. This is London <laughs> Greek Radio. When you notice Brilliant, all right. So, um, the live stream seems to be working. Um, so all good so far. Great. Are you feeling good? No, I'm feeling, okay. feeling good. Yeah, yeah. I'm feeling good. Feeling good. Good discussion so far. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm very happy with that. So if people are, I think there's a few people listening on the live stream. Uh, feel free, even though we're on a break, to continue to um, put questions or comments if you wish. Um, so even though we're on a break on the radio right now, uh, we're still here and available if you want to communicate to us. But yeah, thanks for you know, really good so far. Thank you, it's beautiful. And that point about, you know, this acceptance in the workplace is, is so, so, so important to sort of highlight. Um, also, you know, many people don't want to be seen as uh, disabled or don't accept disability. So it's typically yeah. the umbrella under which you, you're asked to disclose. And It's also happen. interesting the way the forms are set out as well. So I recently mm. had to fill out a form and it said, do you have a disability, yes or no? And if you select yes, then the drop-down menu comes up. 100%. And autism is listed as a social communication disorder. Wow. Still. I've seen all sorts. I've so, seen all sorts. I haven't seen this one. On what, yeah. on what was that? Yeah. On what? So on a, some of the forms where you, you say that you've got a disability and then you pick from the drop-down menu what your yeah. disability is, oh, right. autism is still comes under a social communication disorder. Mm -hmm. And that automatically puts me off saying yeah. that I'm autistic yeah. because yeah, I think the person's going to assume that I have a social communication yeah. disorder. Yeah. Yeah, that's um, it. It's clear, and it doesn't accurately <laughs> represent what, what it means to be autistic. Um, Absolutely. So exactly. Yeah, I think there's a problem with either, even the way in which we ask people to disclose. So we've got a question, actually, if you don't mind. Oh, sorry, Ali. No, 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 no. I was, no, no. That ahead, infuriates me. Sorry? <laughs> that was... Oh, it infuriates you. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Mine is under <laughs> learning difficulties, ADHD, and again, I feel like a fake. Yeah. yeah. If Imagine, I'm speaking yeah. about it, because people will be like, but you were working full-time and you were studying full-time and you have two masters, one PhD and one VA, like... It's, it's gone out, and I never saw it as a. Yeah. Then it was. Sorry, yeah. you said there was a question. No, maybe we'll, we'll, we'll uh, pick it up when, uh, on, once, the, once the show comes back on. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. But yeah, there's a question here about um, stigma in the mm -hmm. environment uh, space that oh, we'll yeah. pick up. Um, oh, yeah. The person who's uh, put that in is, is saying that she's not Greek, but it cuts yeah. across all it's ethnicities. Absolutely. And race. Yeah, 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 it's absolutely, the same, yeah. that's why. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're speaking about heritage and culture, yeah. and you know, ethnic minorities as well as. Uh, Obviously, immigration so important. I was doing a panel discussion for a bunch of people from New York, and they were speaking again of exactly the same thing. You know, kids to immigrants who said, "You don't have to speak our language. Just get out there, try and integrate, mm -hmm. and we'll try and provide you know the best of you." But it's almost like you're trying to create a trade-off between who you truly yeah. have. Sorry, I in your in your yeah. DNA. You just slightly cut off from this. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, no, I agree, I agree. Um, what was I going to but say? But yeah, I've got a point about stigma that I want to speak about. And, we'll pick it up, we'll pick it up. And liberation, you know, and give ourselves permission. Yeah, so we'll pick it up. Definitely. So Sophia's going to pick up on once we mm. uh, return. 
Um, but, but in terms of the numbers, though, in terms of Greek Nine people thousand, in yeah. numbers, like if you think about it, if there are, let's say, for example, there are, ni- there are actually 90,000 Greek people in business, mm-hmm. just generally, in, in the UK. Let's just say that, let's just take mm-hmm. that, for whatever mm-hmm. it means is fact. Mm-hmm. Then if we can sort of work out how many of them are likely to actually be yeah, autistic, right? Because it's, yeah. it's like a 1 in 34, I think mm-hmm. the latest statistic is exactly. 1 in 34, isn't it? I mean, but, even that might not be accurate, yeah. but let's take that mm-hmm. as... I think it's much more, more than that. It's probably more than <laughs> that. But, but let's say we took that ratio, we could apply it to the 90,000 and work it out. You know, it's, it, you can work... You can, you, I don't know what that ratio is, but you could get a rough idea of the reality. But then the, the number of people who actually disclose their autistic... There we go. It's going to be f- a fraction mm-hmm. of that, probably. 100%. Yeah, yeah. But the point here, if we are to really sort of find also other people who... Who agree there should be a movement you know for this community then we need to look at it mm. as autistic but also neurodivergent people to really cover the whole umbrella because mm. as we know neurodivergence covers yeah. anxiety mm. depression yeah, covers so many mm. yeah. Yeah. all right thank you all right Sophia you want to bring us in yep On digital radio, on your mobile and online, this is London Greek Radio. Welcome back everyone. Before we continue, just a reminder to those listening to us that you can also watch us on our live stream and send in comments and questions there by going to facebook.com forward slash London Autism Group Charity. Vina, what key advice would you give to any business leaders and management about how they can make their workplace accessible and inclusive? Such a great question and I love, can I just say, I love how you distinguish between leadership and management. I do not treat those two as synonyms by no means. So for me, leaders are the people who lead by example, who basically have a set of core corporate ethical values that they try to exercise at any point in the career, 24 seven um, in this corporate space. And to me, that has to carry, again, the anthropocentric values we spoke of in the very beginning as part of my introduction. So be compassionate. And by the way, for those people who think, you know, nowadays we're speaking about be kind and uh, be empathetic, it's not a new school of thought. We're born kind. What we tend to forget on the way is that perhaps leaders have to have a certain sort of presence. They have to look perhaps stern or um, really not allow themselves to smile or show emotions. I would say Mm. Really, this is not doing anything, anything positive for the conscious evolution of our space, let alone the workplace. Um, is that so, true for Greek leaders, though? Because I, 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 that surprises me. I mean, I mean, I don't know. I've never thought about it true, before. True <laughs> but I would have thought that Greek leaders are not, not from that... Um, not from this cat, big, right? Yeah, not from yeah, this cat, yeah. But I'm not quite sure how... <laughs> How much compassion we would, ex- I mean, no disrespect to <laughs> fellow Greeks, but I, I have this kind of, you know, image, and speaking about stereotypes, right, yeah, you know, yeah. uh, asking AI to sort of create an image oh, of yeah. a Greek leader, oh, would be wow. perhaps, you know, <laughs> big lads <laughs> in my life, might be of a small statue, but hey, you know, yeah. you haven't heard my voice kind of thing, mm. <laughs> so, so it's not fully that, or let's 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 bring in another world vulnerability you know vulnerability be mm-hmm. vulnerable um be be open i'm not saying go and disclose that you're going through a tough period in your life but really in the same way as you're going through perhaps a temporary um challenge or difficulty or an experience that you're having first-hand experience because that's a lived experience try and think that others like you might be having a tough you know mm. time in their life it could be temporary it could be permanent um, it could be something that is worth being reminded of. So for me, a leader who wants to include uh, the concept of neuroinclusion in the workplace has to be kind, mm. has to really not jump into conclusions, but be, as I always say, respectfully curious. Mm. Don't make a judgment, ask, and really try to, again, lead by mm. example. Now. The managers, like in my industry, in my sector, typically it's somebody who's technically very astute and very experienced that gets one day to be promoted to a people management position. So, you know, picture this. You spend 15 good years of your career 
leading just yourself and trying to always excel expectations and beat them targets and produce this monetary often you know targets that you beat and you, you, you do wonderfully and then one day as a big sort of boost of your I've made it this is my career now you get a salary you know increase but also you get to be called people's manager you become a team lead or you become you know the department manager and so on and so forth that really has seen nothing to prepare you into taking up this role mm. so please give yourself um, that sort of benefit of asking for training mm. being out there saying I need training I need to know I haven't mm. been trained on that mm. I cannot possibly expect myself and don't be hard on yourself don't really feel like because you are that manager that people report into you are coming with a full sort of you know set of skill sets and knowledge about everything mm. possible but that, that training ideally should be autistic led right I mean I, I always yeah, somebody I some well, I was doing a, a talk to some social workers recently and somebody asked me how oh, uh, some one of the social workers was was a parent right and they're mm -hmm. talking about the challenges of their child in in their school and we got talking about the, the question to me was how what can schools do to, to improve inclusivity mm -hmm. same sort of mm -hmm. thing and we, we discussed it, and obviously it's a complex, multifaceted, multi-layered challenge, many mm -hmm. different issues. But I said if there's one thing, one simple thing teachers can do, and I guess this is the same thing with your point, is get some training. Just go and get a little bit of training, buy in some autistic-led, high-quality training. If there's one thing you can do, do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. you have, there are budgets for that, Oof. you know, but so, you know, there's, there's going to be one little thing you can do. That's something practical and, and uh, useful, but it's got to be autistic led, mm. isn't it? And I, I love that you say, well, two things. Yes, definitely, it has to be co-produced. Mm. Nothing, as we say, we, you know, about us without us. So it has to be inclusive. People who have got the first-hand lived experience have to be part of this co-production. Mm. But you said something about budget. Often enough, in my sector, uh, at least, and I'm sure that wouldn't be an exception, really, we're speaking about the training budget. Well, there's a learning and development budget. Mm. There's the community budget. Oh, there's so wow. many there's budgets, budgets. <laughs> exactly. So many budgets mm. that you can really meaningfully utilize. Mm. And I do appreciate people actually say to me, especially HROs, um, do say that we now we're getting calls, we're getting emails by so many people every day. We cannot possibly either have sufficient sort of capital for everything, but also most importantly, because yes, okay, I do know those people in the audience saying, "Come on, we're speaking about finance." Of course, this uh, this endless almost budget. Yes, potentially there is, but the other question then that begs to be answered is, how much resource can I allocate? Because Yes, there's one thing that we do in one of training is that good enough? No, you need something that's ongoing that builds mm. in that creates culture mm. so yeah. that we yeah. can create yeah, this agree. kind of you know radical mm. improvement, as mm. we also say again when it comes mm. to employability. There has to be something that sticks that educates that helps people grow so important. And also, mm. it starts with again, I am a massive supporter of universal design, it's not mm. just mm. about new inclusion. Do something that's going to be universally acceptable okay, and beneficial. Explain to the listeners yeah. what universal design is. So universal design is a principle whereby you're trying to facilitate everybody by taking, you know, the points or the actions that you are. Now, the example that I wanted pretty much to produce back into your question, um, and that was Sophia's question. Sorry, I was looking at Chris. Sophia, <laughs> I meant, really. Um, about what can managers do? The other thing, the other misconception that we often sort of encounter and that gain, for instance, we publish annual reports. So we do have benchmark analysis for our corporate members that we really put them to face the mirror of mm. perceptions and self reflection versus this is, and that has to be a versus here. I'm sorry, even for my very sort of altruistic self, what really the rest of staff the oi poly, the many actually believe, holds mm. true. And this is where you see that there's quite a schism between the two. Mm. Uh, but also very important is to have this data. So we, we carry out annual um, uh, the reports for our individual members, people not affiliated, people who actually come in to be a non-paying, um, every individual member does not uh, pay uh, to be a member, but it's really about them adding their own data points onto the bigger pool of what we said earlier on, mm -hmm. data is so important. And what really gets to be reported often enough is how managers judge the superficial productivity, for instance. Yeah. Do you work from home? 
versus are you there mm. and mm. oh you're contracted to be a nine to six p.m employee but if you stay until seven i take for granted that means higher productivity uh, no it does not mm. so let's not look mm. at judging mm. the appearance of productivity mm. but really be very specific about the actual metrics and the results mm. because autistic people i know and ADHD people will tell you I have a day when I feel not very productive mm. and then I go in the office the next day and I can produce the result and the work mm. worth of a whole week. Yeah. But people look at it, exactly. You see, we've all been there. Mm. I've certainly been there. So do we have a degree of acceptance? So important. Yeah. So, mm. okay. Um, uh, just to remind listeners, uh, both on the radio and on our live stream, that we are here with Vina, who is an expert in... Um, workplace and particular particularly business inclusivity Vina is neurodivergent and has many years of experience and expertise in this area so please do if you have any questions about workplace inclusivity but in particular perhaps business uh, in the within the business space in terms of leaders please do feel free to Absolutely. put in comments or questions we do actually have a few uh, comments and questions and given that we've only got about 10 minutes left perhaps we should uh, go through them yeah um, if that's all right, uh, so we've got a few quite a few points. Firstly, Zara says fantastic charity. Thank you very much, uh, Zara. Helen, lovely to hear from you. Looking great. That's very nice of you, Helen. Great <laughs> to hear from you as always. Mame says a few things. I'm going to read out a few different points from Mame. Stigma due to employment discrimination, discrimination in the workplace, as we discussed mm. earlier, yeah. um, and um, she says. Uh, n undisclosure due to lack of opportunities yeah that's a good mm -hmm. point as well not mm -hmm. being able not the opportunity perhaps not presenting Which itself is. to disclose or perhaps oh. not people not feeling right. empowered yeah, yeah to or confident to disclose uh, autism is 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 classed as a learning disability in the mm -hmm. NHS which that's is a big it. big issue yeah. and perhaps mm. affects statistics and and everything and, and that's again a mis uh, misconception mm. um, what else here? Mame, please highlight autism has not got a look. Professionals and employers get this wrong. There is no look. If you've met one person who's autistic, yeah. you've met one person who's autistic. Mm -hmm. Absolutely spot on. 100%. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. And we would have actually gotten to this point. Um, I believe there's another question, uh, Mame, but uh, great that you highlight it. Um, perhaps also, Chris, if I can sort of just say one extra thing, because I, I heard the comments referring also to what sort of prohibits people from joining that workplace often enough is the things like aptitude tests the test that if you're dyspraxic um, dyslexic or you're autistic you, you might need a uh, longer time to process because yeah. there's, there's something that really says do I really understand or do I really have everything that's listed here mm. for me to be able to respond we should go away from disabling people from entering uh, quite often in my in my sector I hear people who want to hear of retention data and my my sort of pushback is always well retention data how about how many people from the CVs exactly the CVs that you get how many people have you excluded because there was a spelling mistake or perhaps you know point. when you when you had like the first interview they looked they couldn't look at you in the eye um how come this is taken it, as a proxy the free stuff as well absolutely Even the screening got into yeah, yeah, the yeah absolutely the screening it's, tests yeah. yeah i think the other problem with that as well is is the number of employers that state that they're disability confident <laughs> yeah. and they have the two ticks and all of these things but actually what does what does that mean and so many of them now have that as almost a sort of tick box exercise tick box, yeah. that it's not it's not inviting anymore because you think oh this is just another company who are tick also saying that. we welcome neurodivergent mm. um, employees but do, but, but do you have the accommodations can you can you support us in the workplace yeah, yeah. And, and and exactly one of the reasons why I beg people to join for this pledge you know, to join organizations that really get to be active, to be hands-on. So for me, it's not about getting a pledge or giving some money um, in return for a, a little signature sort of logo that says, I am X, Y, and Z. It's all about allow yourself to be tested, to be put through the test. That's why I very much sort of appreciate the work done again and so many other. And I mean, your, uh, your child is absolutely amazing mm -hmm. because again, you. you're very much 
there at the grassroots and you're speaking with the people and you're trying to lift them up and this goes by my own favorite sort of saying which is you raise by lifting others so uh, let's raise ourselves let's rise up and sort of do something that really brings people uh, together but yeah I don't I, I know we have now five minutes well, left. Ma Mame <laughs> says very good point uh, and tests are part of the employment process and work experience yeah and th there's issues with those tests. Mm -hmm. I just want to also highlight Namaki's point um, uh, which reflects what we've been discussing. I just don't want to gloss over it. Um, sure. I'll just read it out. Um, some autistics may worry that disclosing autism on job applications will put them at a dis disadvantage, even though the company present themselves mm -hmm. as welcoming to neurodivergent yeah, people and providing adaptations. Yeah. Yeah, 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 Sophie said that. And also where they ask about interview accommodations yeah There's and i think in saying. those cases the employer is never going to turn around and say we haven't hired you because you're neurodivergent or because you're autistic because you're adhd but they will find another yeah. explanation and, that you know full well is because of absolutely. your neurodivergence absolutely. so yeah asking for accommodations in an interview is not an easy no. thing to do yeah. because you already automatically feel like you're starting sort of one step yeah. behind somebody somebody contacted the charity recently telling us how um their son had got um, a, a young boy uh, not too not too young a teenager had got an interview at mcdonald's right autistic boy got an interview at mcdonald's and for the interview um they put down that um Oh no, they didn't disclose at the interview, right? And they, and sorry, at the shortlisting process, they did mm -hmm. not disclose. Got the interview, and at the interview, they said, um, "Look, us, the, our, the 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 individual is autistic, and he needs somebody to accompany him to support him through the interview mm -hmm. per, uh, process, right? So he needs um, an accompanying support, right? A, a reasonable um, uh, support mechanism mm -hmm. for for the boy." You know, and um, after they said this, McDonald's did not go back, get back to the boy, oh. yeah, and and they contacted oh. us to to tell us this story, mm. and us and you know the poor mum is very and the poor boy as well of course. Yeah, I mean that must mm. be so disheartening yeah. and yeah. and Absolutely. heartbreaking. But and, that's exactly what I mean. That yeah. that employer would not turn around and say, oh, it's because of that. It's because you need a reasonable adjustment. They will find some other excuse yeah. as to why he's not suitable for the job. Yeah. Rather than yeah. allow him the reasonable accommodation and actually find out that he's a fantastic worker. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. And yeah. such a loss, obviously. Mm. So keep those points coming in. We're going to wrap up in about five minutes. Uh, but just before we do, very quickly, uh, Vina, what else can you tell us about perhaps autistic employees like what can they do just give us a few uh, tips within a, a yeah. couple of minutes as to what employees can do to sort of self-advocate and to, to help themselves absolutely absolutely massive and it very much beautifully connects with the rest of the points that we've already had and thanks so much to the audience as well as the people who are watching now the live stream for uh, sharing with us the commentary because it so completely mm. resonates and to the point that you've seen one you're the version person you've seen one you're the version person I mean you have a bunch or at least we can definitely sort of speak about the two of us uh, completely different sort of articulation of the ways um, that, that we sort of experience things but at the same time some strong sort of mutual points about experiences um, again a remarkable sort of educational background as well as a career and what I mean yeah but, look I often hear this example of the rain man and I have no issues in sort of replaying it back at least there has been a movie that really demonstrated it demonstrated in a completely awkward and really non-representative light yes but at least it's brought a term a concept to the mm. lips of people and it's down to us and again to me, I don't feel like I carry, going back to the Sisyphus sort of uh, allegory earlier, I don't feel like I'm carrying on my shoulders all neurodivergent community, and I certainly don't feel like I'm carrying all Greek, Greek Cypriot community either. Mm. But I do feel a very strong sense, and uh, we've previously discussed the sense of justice, you know, that's very much felt amongst, mm. particularly um, enhanced uh, mm. amongst the neurodivergent something to do with the wiring again mm. uh, but I, I feel very strongly about the moral responsibility mm -hmm. for me to be there to claim my space and really be able to explain myself and and communicate so for me especially nowadays in 2024 it is 
really a privilege as well as a responsibility. Again, I see it as part of my accountability and ownership to communicate my needs for support. And by the way, mm -hmm. don't feel like you need to go into any new employer with a big papyrus that you roll out <laughs> and you say, I know everything I need. Sometimes, because guess what? Sometimes we just don't know. Mm -hmm. Uh, well, ask the question again, in the same way as we expect those managers to be respectfully curious, ask the question, what kind of support do you have? And by the way, if you feel there's not such a thing as support, well, again, in the same way as we create our own business opportunities, then go and create your own ERG. Um, again, acronym ERG for being, mm. yeah, the Employee Resource, Resource Group. So suggest, uh, nowadays we're quite privileged, I mean late bloomers, privileged, we're privileged into highlighting the long-term stigma. So we have uh, gender, sexuality, or, you know, any other uh, socioeconomic background, ERGs. And so do we in terms of neurodivergence. So, and all of this, by the way, together, all these various ERGs can shape up that tapestry of mm. intersectionality. So yeah. please mm. make sure you communicate because quite often, going back to the universal design, everybody, all of these can actually create such a beautifully consistent, yet diverse and colorful um, concept mm. and really give us the permission to be and liberate ourselves from the stigmas. Um, okay. Okay, thank you, Vina. So yeah, um, look, look up uh, ERGs, everybody. Um, in our university, we call them something that we call them DR, DEIs, disability. Well, Equality and inclusion yeah. groups, but yeah, they're ERGs, aren't mm. they? Terms of, it's a little groups, but look up, look up those. Uh, fantastic advice. Thank you very much, mm. uh, Vina. Uh, before I um, do my little outro, uh, Ellie, is there anything you wanted to add? Or no, sorry, I'm not absolutely yeah. fascinating. No, I'm just yeah. like it, there's so much information to digest yeah. and think about. Mm. Um, you know, you can talk about this for hours, like literally 100%. hours. There's so much to talk about. And I think that we need to come back to it because yeah, I think we've just touched two. a little yeah, bit. I agree. It. I've just been thinking this has been one of my favourite episodes yeah. and I think there's still so much more yeah. to, to discuss. Exactly. So yeah. I think we need Good to point. come back to this topic again. Savina, thank you very much for mm. being here today. Yeah. Um, thank you for Can you me. very quickly uh, ex state where people and how people can contact you if they have any questions about ERGs uh, or uh, anything uh, else? Oh, <laughs> yeah, <absolutely. laughs> well, anybody about olives or <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Oh, in this kind of uh, this kind of time of the year, I always say, any tips about travelling to Greece? <laughs> you know, I'm here. I'm your person. Um, so you'll find me on LinkedIn for those who can type away. I mean, you will find me under linkedin.com forward slash in forward slash Vina Theo so you don't have to sort of do the Dora Coppola bit so Theo only <laughs> Vina Theo as one um, and also you can email me at gain so that's Vina at gaintogether.org anytime so really I'd be delighted to respond to every single one of you brilliant thank you so much Vina well that brings us to the end of today's show it's flown by mm -hmm. as always uh, our next show will be this time next month uh, on the 2nd of may at 7 p.m uh, which as always is the first thursday of every month so that is the key thing to remember about our show we're always here on the first thursday of every month at 7 p.m we'll be live streaming the show as well on our charity facebook page which is facebook.com forward slash london autism group charity that's facebook.com forward slash London Autism Group Charity. So do feel free to stop by and say hi and ask a question. And a big thanks also to the people today who did who did so. Uh, I'd also like to remind you to pop into one of our charity community cafes uh, to meet the community if you wish to find support and connect with others. Currently we have community cafes in Southgate, Islington, Ealing, Woodford and Grays. So in fact uh, the Ealing one is this Saturday and Grays is this Sunday, both of which are fantastic. Uh, we also have monthly autistic adult activity days in the Holy Sepulchre Church in the City of London by Holborn Viaduct. That information you can find about on our website, which is www.londonautismgroupcharity.org. Um, and you can find all of the other information about our community cafe events and all the other services that we have on our website. And a final reminder that you can find the recordings of these episodes on our YouTube channel, which you can find by searching YouTube for London and Autism Group Charity. A big, big, big thanks again to my lovely co-hosts, Sophia and Ellie, and a special thanks to our wonderful 
uh, guest Dr. Vina Theodora Gopulu for your time <laughs> and expertise <laughs> and your very uh, kind um, and forgiving expression of your surname. <laughs> Which is um, a beautiful surname, I think, actually. <laughs> Even better Thank than mine. Thank you very much. I'll tell my dad. <laughs> uh, <laughs> thanks also to Tony Neil Fido in the background for Thank helping you. with everything, which has actually been really, really um, uh, important today, if, uh, given the live streaming. Thank you for that. James Gordon for his editorial input. Absolutely. And, of course, all of you lovely listeners. And finally, stay tuned for the amazing Andonis Progobio, who's up next. And have a great month. Thank you very much. Right,